Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Peter from White Raven Production and welcome to part one of this Raven vs Komodo video. So I was initially gonna do a one long video, but it became quite a lot. So in the part one and two, we will cover the side by side of these two cameras. So we will go over some technical features, the of course the specs, but we'll take a look at these cameras side by side. In the third part, we will take a look at why these two cameras complement each other. But without further ado, let's roll that intro. If you want to watch a specific test, I have a uh, test plus the time code in the description below. So you just can uh, click on that and then just go directly to the tests that you want to watch. First test that I did was actually the startup time and the sensor calibration time because Komodo actually is really quick in this regard. The boot up is around 27 seconds. The sensor calibration is under two minutes, which is phenomenal because if you have a look at the Raven, you can see the boot up time is, you know, nearly to one minute. The sensor calibration time takes around 28 minutes. Is it's just amazing that Komodo actually does it so quickly and you know the Raven it takes a while so compression rates Raven it has the full flavor of compression rates that you can choose from from 2 to 1 to 22 to 1 Komodo on the other hand has the HQ MQ and LQ If you take a look at these, uh, you know, first shots, the really on the white and you really start to see the also the difference in crop between the two cameras. The 6K and the, you know, of course, new sensor really shines, uh, in my opinion. It looks more clean straight out of camera. You know, the legacy cameras, DSMC2, they all have this green tint that you have to fix in post which is fine by the way just taking a look at these side by sides as well you can really see that komodo has a great sensor it actually lets in a bit more light both cameras do well when it comes to details as you can see in these flower shots i just think that because you have that extra resolution with komodo you can really benefit a lot in terms of resolution if you don't need the slow motion the fact that komodo comes in at this price point and still performs this nice the dsmc2 cameras have this red flare but komodo actually hasn't and it's nice because you know despite it being distinctive i don't want it so when it comes to resolution i really feel like that the 6k versus 4k makes quite a bigger deal than i first imagined the field of view that you get with Komodo and overall image quality. I really need to give this to Komodo and I think that it is so amazing that a camera this size and this weight produces such a nice image. And you know, people were wondering, is this gonna be a red image? Is red gonna compromise on quality image, image wise? And I feel like that they didn't. I think it's actually a improvement. Um, not saying that Raven is bad in any way because I love that sensor and I love the look of it, but I really do feel like that Komodo really sets the bar for me as a Raven owner to the next level. And I love that. So in terms of sensors, the Raven actually has a rolling shutter and the Komodo has a global shutter. And I think uh, Red overall performs really well when it comes to having you know good performance when having a rolling shutter but the global shutter of komodo is just phenomenal it's new it's 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 great i think if you look at these two tests rolling and global you can really see how these cameras uh, meet the high expectations that the high-end cinema world you know demands of their cameras uh, quality wise it actually adds a lot of value to your production uh, i do a lot of gimbal work so for me having that global shutter 
is something that I can really benefit from from a uh, working standpoint. So when it comes to resolution, I think the 6K being very amazing. And you have in 6K two options to shoot real time and 40 FPS slow motion. But if you go down to like 5K, you have the, in my opinion, most convenient option of 48 frames, which gives you a decent amount of slow motion. At least I don't need uh, that much more that often. But you have the 4K 60, which is also very nice because, you know, if you need that over 50% slow motion, 60 FPS actually can be a very convenient option. And 2K, we have 120 frames per second. So as you can see here, we have the option to shoot ProRes. For that to happen, we have to reboot the camera. So if you look at the frame rates and resolution, you can really see that this is the main thing that Raven excels in, 4K, 120 frames. So when it comes to formats they can shoot, Red, uh, Raven is able to shoot red R3Ds, RAW and ProRes, but has also the option to shoot a proxy. So basically meaning that you can shoot both RAW and ProRes at the same time. When it comes to Raven, you have the 120 FPS in 4K and you can shoot also time lapses with one FPS. We hope that it will come to Komodo in the future, but as of right now, it's not there. In terms of resolution, you can max out at 4.5K, but I tend to shoot in 4K HD. For me, having the 4K ProRes in Komodo is actually really useful. Both, however, shoot ProRes on a full readout of the sensor, meaning that despite this being 4K, you use the full 6K sensor on Komodo. I shoot with red because of their skin tones, because of the fact that they are so great. It does not seem to me that uh, Raven or Komodo has, you know, a better performance when it comes to this, especially looking t at them side by side. I'm just very happy that both cameras still render skin tones so well. It's rather convenient to have this this skin tone color and how they feel just match straight out of camera instead of having to do a lot of post work. To me it actually feels like Komodo has again a slight edge and that might be due to the resolution but it most definitely is an amazing sensor, no doubt about that. at these side by sides you can see that Komodo strip down is actually really really tiny that is amazing because that is the intention of how you can use this camera if you want to Komodo is a smaller system more lightweight more run and gun you can really see that this kit really benefits from being small uh, you can build it up it's fine it's a you know a proper cinema camera but keeping it small and having the option of course to do so is really nice. I have tried so far both setups, a bigger setup and a smaller setup and I think that Red did a amazing job on the body and how you can utilize your camera in general so thank you for that. And I need to say that the DSMC2 bodies still are amazing and the fact that everything can be cableless is really nice but you know we do, we're doing a side by side here and then you can really see how bulky and large in comparison to Komodo a DSM-C2 camera can be. Guys, this is the first part. I am super curious what you thought uh, of both cameras and how they performed. Please let me know in the comment section down below. And of course, part two will be here soon. If you liked the video, uh, like the video, leave a comment in the comment section down below and consider subscribing to the channel. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss any uploads. And I hope to see you in part two. Later.